It's a rainy summer day, perfect for real estate financial modeling. Welcome back. In this video, I'll be solving the Black Capital case, which is part of Joshua Carr's real estate case studies deck. The case is marked as unreasonably difficult, but I think with structure and forethought, it's very solvable. That being said, this case may take a few more parts than previous cases due to its complexity. Black Capital is considering the purchase of a 136,000 square foot office building at $800 per square foot. There are two tenants, one who is in place and another who will start their lease on acquisition. Both have step-up clauses based upon the lease start, not the acquisition date. The second tenant also has a free rent period for the first six months. Operating expense is a flat percentage and capital expenses are fixed as well. Acquisition and sale are straightforward using a set cap rate. Financing are where things get trickier. Black Capital is considering refinancing the property at the end of year three. So the model needs to be able to calculate the effect of refinancing or not refinancing. And finally, the model needs to distribute cash flows according to the partnership agreement over a hurdle rate of 12%. Looking at the inputs I've already added to the model, we have our general assumptions as well as our tenant-specific assumptions. What's very important is this refinance toggle here, which is going to run the model based on whether we are refinancing or not and will allow for sensitivity analysis later on. To begin, I build out the model skeleton, running the model out to 84 months or 7 years, one year past the started sale date to use forward 12 months of NOI, which is required for the capitalization. I then add borders here to make things easier. The year is the rounded function I've used in the past. Start date is the end of month function I've used in the past as well. Starting off, I build the rental revenue structure. Remember that tenant two has a free rent period of six months, which needs to be accounted for. Tenant rental revenue will start only after the lease start date and will end when the lease term ends. However, for both tenants, the lease terms continue past our analysis date. To calculate rental revenue, I take the gross rent and multiply it by the NRA. For the lease step up, a Boolean adds $10 per square foot to the rent after September 30th, 2015, or at the start of the tenant's fourth year as specified in the case. For tenant 2, I take the exact same structure but change tenant 1 variables to tenant 2 variables to calculate the correct base rent. As you can see at the start of tenant one's fourth year, the rent increases as it's supposed to.
For free rent, the case specified that only tenant 2 has concessions. To calculate free rent, I use two booleans to ensure that free rent only occurs after the lease start and before the end of the lease term. Then I recalculate the gross rent and use another boolean to constrain free rent within six months of the lease start. I could have also pulled directly from tenant 2's potential base rent, but this way you can see the logic behind the free rent period. We have six months of free rent, so the equation is working as expected. Sum up the potential base rent and the rent concessions to calculate the total rental revenue. For our expense recoveries, I only need to use a VLOOKUP to match the year with the expense reimbursements percentage, using an approximate match so that the expense revenue percentages continue to calculate past year 5. Potential gross income is simply the total rental revenue plus our other tenant revenue. And here I'm adjusting the model's column width so that all the numbers are visible. The case doesn't specify any credit or vacancy loss, so I won't build it in here for the sake of time. That being said, to keep the model working as it should, I'll add in vacancy loss to effective gross income. Operating expenses are also straightforward, with a fixed expense ratio being applied to our gross rents. I don't just multiply 40% by the total potential base rent because doing so would grow our expenses alongside the rent step-ups, which would put artificial downwards pressure on the bottom line. Net operating income is EGI less expenses. Now I build out tenant improvements, leasing commissions, and capital expenditures. As the case states, tenant one will receive $35 per square foot of improvements within the first year. 
because the case doesn't specify if TIs are spread out within the first year, which doesn't make sense, or if TIs occur at move-in, I assume that TIs occur in the first month and use a Boolean to lock in TIs in month one. The case doesn't specify any tenant leasing commissions either. And CapEx is fixed at $0.30 cents a square foot per year. Sum all that up to get total TIs, LCs, and capital expense. For our capital events, the equations are straightforward and similar to previous cases I've solved. Acquisition price is the cost per square foot multiplied by the square footage of the building. Acquisition fees are 1% of that acquisition price. Sales price uses a Boolean to lock in the right sale month, or in month 72, and uses a forward 12-month NOI and the 6% cap rate to calculate the sale price. With sale fees, that is once again 1% of the sale price. And as you can see, the sale occurs in month 72 as it should. Finally, unlevered cash flow is the sum of all capital events and net cash flow, gated by the hold period because we don't want to count inflows from outside our investment period. And I just need to fix the sales fee here, which should be negative. And that's the first part of the black capital case, building out the unlevered cash flows. In the next video, I'll get into the trickier debt assumptions and build out the equity waterfall. Thanks for watching.